stuff. They actually mm-hmm. even have events where the kick fighters are actually fighting against kangaroos. Oh wow! Yeah, I bet the kangaroos are winning some of those because they're pretty. They're pretty stout. I wouldn't want to find out, my friend. Well, researchers share footage of a coyote, a badger, being buddies and playing together. A wildlife camera set up by researchers in California captured this unusual event. Coyotes and badgers don't even get along with each other, let alone they were like buddies and having fun just playing. <laughs> I actually seen that. That was pretty remarkable. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, that's something else when you see mismatched things that sometimes eat each other or, and then they're all buddy buddies. It, that's amazing. But you know what? Sometimes the mother instinct takes over or just want to be friends. Well, yeah, I know. Isn't that weird? But again, in South Carolina, Uh-oh. a lotto winner. This one is on for February 5th. That's like yesterday. This guy mm-hmm. has been playing the numbers for like 15 plus years. Well, guess what? Last night, he scored a $100,000 jackpot. Oh, my. They're in South Carolina again. I'm telling you, that's the place to go to play your lotteries if you're out and about. If you're out and about. Well, it's certainly not here in Washington State. I don't know how it is in your state, but, I mean, this is crazy because it, it's almost every night somebody's winning a lot of money. It is. It, as a matter of fact, I think you report at least two or three nights uh, on the shows right here about people in South Carolina winning. And some people have won them twice, two different times. Well, this one lady has won it now, uh, like, or a man, I can't remember which one, is now in the past month four times. Four um, times? Yeah, one was a million dollars, then it was like 500000 then it was like 250000 then whatever it was tonight. I mean, all wow. in, in a month's time. I tell you, you would think that would bring some kind of a uh, investigation because people, you know, you got to be really lucky just to win one, really, but to win two, three, or four. That's wow. what I find very unusual with luck. Uh, but again, you know, if you go into the store, they have no control. They don't know if they even have the lucky numbers on the lotto tickets to, you know, pay off anything, you know, may, uh, more than a hundred bucks. They don't know. But it, 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 it's strange that somebody has such good luck, you know. Uh, maybe they're an alien abductee and the aliens are saying, <laughs> now's the time to go buy the ticket tonight. I don't know. Walk uh, in that, yeah, yeah, you're right. They tell them, they're telling them through the implants, walk in that store right now and buy that ticket right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, ooh, well, no, no one's telling me that. Anyway, in England... <laughs> A large fireball lights up the night sky, extremely bright. It takes from nighttime to like almost daytime. And uh, the scientist said, well, it was an unusual fireball, but it was definitely a large meteor. Wow, that must have been the one that was a near miss by uh, four um, lunar cycles, four lunar distances, just Yesterday or the day before, probably the same one, or maybe, I don't know, but we had a close flyby anyway. Yeah, this is on the 5th, so that was yesterday. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that that must have been the same one I kind of read about where it said it was a, it was very close. And and nobody even reported about it beforehand. That's another one. You know, it, it, it you didn't hear about it until afterwards. Nobody said, hey, we're going to have one come by close or none of that. Uh, that's the whole thing. You know, I, it, it says a lot of these, maybe there's reasons why we don't hear about it till it happens. Maybe they don't want us to know because they're not sure. I mean, if this one lit up the sky over England, right? Mm-hmm. That means that it came into our atmosphere. Oh, yeah, that's true. That, that, so that was a different one. That wasn't the one I was talking about even. That was, this is another one. This one, you're right. If it lit up, it got in the atmosphere. That's way close. Too close for comfort for me. Uh, yeah, me too. And look at the one that last year they said was going to miss and hit in the Mediterranean. Yeah. Well, again, they, they said it was going to miss between Earth and the moon. Well, boy, were they wrong. 
Yeah, I'll say. And look how many over the last year I reported on, and I think you too, where uh, they didn't even know they were coming by. But I guess from what NASA was saying, if some of them approach us from behind the sun or like uh, something to do with the sun, they can't see them till they're right upon us. But if that's the case, all it would take would be one about the size of you know New York City or even smaller, and you're talking some big trouble. Well, you know, they said they need the money, funding, you know, to put more, you know, of these electronic telescopes up where they can watch these things. But they don't have the budget, so they only see a small percentage of them. That's yeah. the scary part. They don't see all yeah. of them that's coming flying by. That's true. And, you know, the other scary real part is what can we even do anything about it if we do see them? What can we do? Well, you might have enough time to go get yourself a bowl of sugar frosted flakes and a, a and a glass of Mountain Dew. Go to the yeah. sofa and then put your feet up, you know, on a nice cozy whatever, you know, and uh, eat your cereal. And you might even have enough time to finish your Mountain Dew before it hits. Mm. So I shouldn't go to the beach and watch the, the waves go out and, and go way out and be knowing when they come back in, I'm going to get buried. Don't worry about it. Okay. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, it's the one you don't hear is going to get you. So don't worry about it. No, I won't worry about it. If I'm sitting around and I see daylight or nighttime turn day for extended periods of time, and I'm hearing noises and a lot of wind and fire i i might as well just you know just let it go yeah and your house is shaking and the floors are shaking and your windows are shattering hey <laughs> do what they told us to do in grade school go underneath your coffee table <laughs> that is yeah you give me a flashback there i remember in first second grade it was still heavy cold war we would have you know once a month get under the, the old desk that flopped up you know with the lids on them and they were metal bottoms we had to get under them that was our drill and I'm thinking, even back then at seven years old, I'm thinking, you know, with a nuclear bomb, the way they're describing them, would this desk really protect me? <laughs> well, have you ever seen those old uh, films from the Department of, you know, the Army and Defense and all that, when they fired off these nuclear, uh, you know, bombs and stuff in Nevada, where they built a small community of houses and buildings and stores, right? And they put mannequins in them. I mean, they had furniture in them. They had, it was like a real house. I mean, they, they, right down to the T, except, but they didn't use real people. They could have used prisoners. That would have solved a lot of problems. But no, they used mannequins. But it showed what happened to them. So does it really yeah. make any difference? I mean, you think crawling under a table <laughs> when the whole thing is going to go and it's gone. I mean, you know, you're, that table is going to be in Kansas. It's, yeah, that's because, yeah, listen, yeah, I've seen them videos. They, yeah. They're gone. Like, that whole house is gone, not to mention the desk and you under it. Like, there's nothing there. It, it blows it away. It's disintegrated. If you don't, yeah, don't burn up to nothing. Yeah. Could you imagine you're in the Midwest and a t tornado comes? And you had a whole herd of cows, and they're now gone. Well, I sure hate to be on the other end when they drop out of the sky. Wouldn't it be horrible? Oh, boy, oh, boy. Yeah, that would be horrible. Because the average heifer probably weighs, you know, 1,000 pounds or 800, 600, depending. But that's a lot of beef come falling down. And, and listen, you don't want to get hit by one of them. No. Yeah. I, I'm just wondering... What, what it's like to be picked up by one and, and carried off for a few miles and then, you know, dropped off. Well, you probably won't know it because you're probably going to kill you. I mean, because usually, you know, I've seen some of them tornadoes because I live where there's a lot of tornadoes. And um, they picked up semi-trucks. And I'm talking 200 feet up in the air. You know, when that comes down, they just shatter. Oh, yeah. That would scare the you-know-what out of me. Oh, I, there was one not too, a couple of years ago, and I think it was somewhere maybe near Cincinnati that happened. But uh, it had a picture of it, and you could see the semi. It was a good couple hundred feet in the air, and, and there, luckily there was nobody in it. And I think the same one's 
uh, kind of tornadoes had the same results down there in Joplin, Missouri, a few years ago. It, it, you wouldn't believe the power some of those tornadoes have, especially them F fours and fives. Well, you know, when I c- came back from North Carolina back many moons ago with my first wife, we ran into one, and we were on the interstate, and it was maybe about a half a mile away from us, maybe even closer. And you could actually see it was going through farmland. And it was like tearing roofs and parts of the houses. And you could see them just going up in the air. And, little, you know, and, and as big hunks being torn up in little pieces. So I guess if they picked you up, you know, you would be tore apart. Oh, oh, big time. And the thing about tornadoes, what people don't realize, what kills you in tornadoes is the littlest thing. If a tornado's got 150, 200 mile an hour winds, that projectile is going that speed. I've seen cigarettes in, lodged into telephone poles like a nail. That's how hard that wind blew it. So hard it didn't shatter the cigarette. It went through the telephone pole. And I've seen the two by four sticking inside of houses. They're so fast it don't even shatter. It goes right through it. I mean, it's destructive. It's very dangerous. Yeah. Well, I'm glad. You know, but funny is a year ago, up here, down at the compound, down at the harbor, just like eight, nine miles from my compound, there's a place called Port uh, Orchard, Washington. And they had one. Now, we never have one. That was the first reported one in probably the last hundred years. And it didn't do a lot of damage, but it went through an area of a strip mall, tore off all the, the roofing of the strip mall, did, you know, shattered all the windows, it went a little farther, then it tore up some houses to the point where they weren't houses anymore. And then, you know, it did some other little damage, and then, it, poof, it was gone. But it all, did all this damage probably within a half, not even a half mile, probably a quarter mile distance of where it all happened. But thank God it didn't just keep on going. And it, it just appeared out of nowhere. It just, boom, there, were, there it was. Yeah, so, uh, some scary, scary stuff. I, I've seen several of them develop and go back, and just, wow. Mm. Yeah. Well, no, ten- thank you. Yeah, tonight we're going to be talking about Mothman. We're going to be talking about Bigfoot. We're going to be talking about dinosaurs. And uh, Joe has actually gone to a convention where, you know, a lot of people who collect fossils are there, and uh, he's going to tell us even about that. So it's going to be a good show tonight. Yeah, it is. He's always got some good stuff about uh, new sightings and, and even people with sightings of um, dinosaurs and uh, Mothman and Thunderbirds and Pterodactyls and all kind of good stuff. Now, if you don't think any prehistoric animals don't live out there, well, you better think about it again. The other day, and you can still see it on the website, they found, well, a species of a shark, kind of a dinosaur shark. That shouldn't even exist, but it does. Now, what's that tell you? Yeah, I've seen the picture. It, it It's scary looking, too. Now, well, I'll tell you what. If you were swimming and something like that came swimming by you, I don't know. <laughs> I'd, I would take my chances with a uh, great white. Yeah, well, yeah, right. So that's, what's that tell you about the one you're talking about? Yeah, take a chance with a great white. Listen, you'd be treading water getting out of there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you never know. Maybe it might come up through my bathtub. <laughs> oh boy, wouldn't that be something? That sharks could, you know, get to turn into water and then appear in your tub. One big mouth was waiting to get you. Well, thank God there's no more Shark Weeks on a certain <laughs> network. I tell you, I am burned out on sharks. I've seen them coming out from the sky. I've seen them sink big destroyers. I've seen them just, you know, biting people's head off if they were floating in the air. I don't know. I, and that tells me that people are running out of things to come up with, you know, in scary movies with when they start coming up with stuff like that. Oh, yeah. They've got ghost sharks and tornado sharks and all kind of, they mix everything with them. They, they've run out of material. You're right. Yeah. Hey, I don't don't worry about it. I'm going to kill some of these sharks when they come in through the high school with a chainsaw. I don't know. (laughs) Anyway, we're going to take our break. And then after the break, James is going to do the news. And then we're going to have Joe Taylor on. So everybody, you know, stay tuned. Maybe pop some popcorn. 
get next to that warm fireplace, you know, actually pour yourself a nice glass of wine and just relax and we'll be back. <laughs> 